We know that the idea of fields, as my memory of the history of physics, began with Michael Faraday. Is that correct? Or does it go farther back than that? That would be fine if you gave it to Faraday. I mean, he certainly played a huge role in figuring mid, out that- Mid 19th century. Mid 19th mm -hmm. century, electricity, magnetism, both had fields associated with them. Technically, it, no one ever mentions this, but our old friend Pierre Simon Laplace, Mm. circa 1800 mm. realized that you know Isaac Newton had this idea of gravity the inverse square law and and Newton was very puzzled like you have the earth here you have the moon over there there's a gravitational force how does the moon know what the gravitational force is it is nothing action, between them nothing in between them action at a distance right and Laplace figured out you could rewrite Newton's theory of gravity in terms of a gravitational field so Whoa. I kind of give him credit. Wow, Whoa. look at that. Are fields real or are they just a, a convenience? Because by the way, you, you are partially in the department of philosophy there. Yeah. So I get to Very ask much. you philosophically I, leaning questions. I'm not allowed to say that's a philosophy question and ignore it. I actually have to answer those you questions. You actually have yes, to answer that's, it. That's my job. Good, all right. Yeah, so the story that we tell in the book is if you were 1895, right? If you were just before the turn of the, to the 20th century, you would have thought that matter, tables and chairs, was made of particles, right. stuff. We knew about electrons, you knew about atoms. And you would have thought that the forces between the atoms were mediated by fields, the gravitational field, the electric field, the magnetic field. And one of the great triumphs of quantum physics in the 20s and 30s was, it said, it's all fields, electricity, magnetism are fields, but so are electrons and quarks and neutrinos. Mm -hmm. And they vibrate in different ways and through the miracle of quantum mechanics, when you look at those vibrating fields, they appear to us as particles. The particles come out of the field. Is this an early variant of what would later be string theory where they're saying particles are vibrations in the strings? Well, particles are vibrations in the fields and that's absolutely accurate in the regimes we're talking about here. Is there something deeper that they could be vibrations of, strings, et cetera. That's a speculative idea, very, very promising, but we just scale, don't know. Yeah, be, much right. smaller. We don't need to know for predicting what's gonna come out of the Large Hadron Collider. Okay, so you. So let cool. me ask you a blunt question, which sounds stupid, but I think it's, me, it's a meaningful question. Do electrons exist as, cool. as, as now a, wait, is that is that uh, a science or a philosophical question? Well, well, because <laughs> natural as I philosophy. Is as I understand here. it, we have never measured the size of the electron. It is smaller than the smallest capacity we have ever conjured to measure its size. Okay, I got to ask you uh, a preliminary question. How truthful do you want me to be? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay, give me give me what you say in the back room, in, in the back room with the cigars. What, no, what first lie to me. <laughs> <laughs> then tell me the truth. Oh, okay. The lie is, yes. what is real is the electron field uh -huh. and little vibrations in those electron fields show up in our detectors as particles. So it's not that we haven't measured the size of the electron, it's that there is no such thing as the size of the electron. The electron right. is a vibration in a field. It can have different vibrational um, wavelengths. So it's, so but so, and it shows it, up as the particle. Yes, that's oh right. Oh my God. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it comes to the party that way, but otherwise right, it's, it's not. not. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and, that oh, is so, wait, wait. so oh, trippy. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> that is so freaky, man. Wait, 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 wait. So, so you, you and Einstein both were bothered by this. Yeah, I so am well, very bothered you, by this. Yeah. Wait, so you cannot measure the electron in its wave state to be a particle because the act of measuring it turns it into the particle. The way that we usually measure things, you say, where is it? And you get a little track in your particle detector because you keep asking where it is and you always get a definite answer to the question, where is it? But when you're not asking that question, it's spread out all over the place. Okay, that's, is that the lie or the truth? That's the yeah. lie. I haven't even gotten to the truth yet. Okay, okay now, now give me the truth. You realize in the 1920s that you thought the electron was a little particle. In fact, you should describe it in quantum mechanics by a wave function. If you ever took chemistry, if you ever saw those pictures of the orbitals of electrons, et cetera, that's the wave function of the electron. Mm -hmm. Soon thereafter, you realize, no, actually you should be doing field theory, quantum field theory. And so there's a field that the electron is a vibration in and you're asking what really exists, well, there's a wave function of that field. So there's like fieldiness on top of fieldiness. And finally, you say that, okay, what if you have like different fields, different particles, do they each have a wave function? No, 
there is one wave function for the whole kit and caboodle of them, the wave function of the universe. That's what's real. The wave function of the universe is real. Now, you know he's been yeah. smoking something. That's crazy. <laughs> you know, where yeah. was he before this? <laughs> <That was a, laughs> where, 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 where. <laughs> Are you just talking this, or or is this hypothesized, soon to be experimentally verified? I encourage all of the listeners out there to check out my paper entitled "Reality." This would be a research paper. Research paper as, called "Reality as a Vector in Hilbert Space." Okay. That's okay. what reality is. So, mm -hmm. look, first let me explain. Sure. Not everyone agrees with the true thing I just said. So okay. there's <laughs> disagreement right, because of this fact that physicists it's your personal truth. can't agree on what quantum mechanics really says. So we have this idea that everyone uses in quantum mechanics, Hilbert space, which is the space of all possible imaginable quantum states of the universe. And someone like me, who is a purist, an extremist about this, says we have all possible quantum states, the actual universe is one of them, and it changes with time. Other people will say, no, that's not reality. That's just a tool we use to describe predictions, to you know make uh, predictions for experiments. Other people will say that's part of reality, but there's other parts as well. We don't have a consensus on this. Okay, oh. I like the absence of consensus. Yeah, exactly. It keeps you, it wakes you up in the morning. Mm. And you, and whole, whole thing sounds very political. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> All right. So where? How do you square? all the successful predictions of quantum physics with any intuitive understanding of what's going on. Because I, I've said many times, and I'm, I'm happy to say it again, the universe is under no obligation to make sense to us. So once you accept that, why try to make sense of it and, and jump through hoops and brain twists just to say, well, it's got to be this or it's got to be that. But it calculates and it works. Move on. The universe is under no obligation to make sense, but remarkably, it keeps making sense. Once we really let ourselves listen to what the universe is trying to tell us, mm -hmm. the universe seems to be intelligible. It's not deeply, ineffably mysterious. And it's a give and take. It's not like our intuition just maps on to reality. Reality is like, nope, your intuition was a little bit off there. Yeah. Try to update. And if you're open-minded about it and you buy the right books, very updatable. <laughs> yeah. You can absolutely get there is what I'm saying.